assalamu alaikum and ramadan kareem and welcome to our colon cancer awareness webinar i'm dr asia nabi assistant medical director and general practitioner and i'm honored to be your moderator for today's discussion colon cancer is a serious and often life threatening disease affecting millions worldwide but with early detection and timely treatment the outcome can be significantly improved our goal today is to increase awareness of colon cancer its its risk factors symptoms screening option and treatment modalities we hope today's webinar will serve as an opportunity for individuals and families to learn more about colon cancer ask questions and connect with anyone in the community who may be impacted by this disease we want to raise awareness about the importance of screening and early detection and empower individuals to take charge of their health and well-being with this i would like to welcome my first speaker on this webinar today i have dr piyush somani with me he is an experienced gastroenterologist advanced endoscopist liver expert with over 14 years of experience and performs interventional diagnostic endoscopy he is presently working as a consultant endocrinologist uh, gastroenterologist and head of gastroenterology in prime hospital dr piyush has joined us from prime hospital we welcome you dr piyush you can unmute your mic doctor yeah uh, i think it's unmute now yeah we welcome you dr piyush to this webinar session good afternoon today. assalamu alaikum to all yes i have my another speaker on this webinar today we have dr akhilesh sapra he's a gastrointestinal surgeon with expertise in colorectal pathology he has expertise in managing colorectal cancer as well as benign pathology from more than 12 years he is well trained to perform minimal invasive procedures in colorectal cancer thank you doctor for joining us today thank you and good afternoon to everyone so thank you doctors for joining us today and we look forward to a productive and informative discussion on colorectal cancer so let let's begin our session with with my question to dr piyush uh, what is colon cancer and how does it develop doctor Okay, so colon cancer is is one of the topmost cancers in the world. Uh, as per the U.S. data, it is the third most common cancer in U.S.A. and all over the world, it is among the top five cancers. Now, when we use the word colon, it's basically the large intestine. It also includes the rectum also. So the common terminology for the layman is colorectal cancers. Uh, this cancer is predominantly common, particularly in the old age. more than 50 years of age but in the last few years we are seeing this cancers happening in earlier or younger population also uh this cancers affects the colon sometimes it affects most of the time it affects the left side of the colon but it can also affect the right side of the colon is there so this is the prevalence about the colon cancer basically and doctor uh, uh, as you see right and left side how does it develop what is the reason for developing yeah so colon cancer doesn't develop in one day you know there is a myth among the people that you know it's a cancer and it might have developed in one month or two months no any cancer goes through a process and the process starts in the colon so there is a wall of the colon the first layer of the colon known as mucosa for our layman and there are some changes in the cells of the colon and when the cells of the colon at the microscopic level they becomes abnormal they forms polyps so colon polyp is a pre cancer lesion so before the colon cancer develops there is something called polyp polyp is like some kind of a mass in the colon which can be flat or it can be like a tree with a stalk or with a stem this polyps initially are small and slowly and steadily this polyps changes from the low grade type to high grade type and then from there the colon cancer develops so it's a i would say not a long process but it is a process where the colon cancer goes through it 
normal colon, then some inflammation, we call it as altihab in Arabic, then polyp, small polyp, then large polyp, and then the cancer develops. Thank you, doctor. Thank you for that uh, introduction about the colon cancer. Dr. Akhilesh, it's very difficult, you know, when we talk about in general cancers, people are not ready for this uh, any time in their life. And uh, uh, it is now people have developed, you know, a choice like where they go for early screening, they go for treatment. So what are that risk factors which anyone should know that I am at a high risk of uh, cancer and I should be checked? If you can tell the audience about who are at high risk for uh, colon cancer in their lifetime. As you said correctly, uh, won't easily accept that they have cancers. But there are certain things which a normal population should be very much careful about, which uh, certain populations carries higher risk for the cancer. They should be screened earlier. One of them, the, there are certain modifiable risk factors. Some of them are non-modifiable risk factors. Among the non-modifiable risk factors, the age is the most important one. Earlier it was above 50 nowadays, the recent literature which is coming down. Anyone who is more than age of 45, they have chances to develop colorectal cancers. Then uh, second modifiable risk factor is family history. Around 5 to 10 percent of the colorectal cancers have a familial association. There are many syndromic associations which carries genes in the family. They are more prone to get cancer. The most important thing for such patients is they present early. I have seen the cancers seen in second decades, third decades, fourth decade. Very, very common, especially in UAE here in the Filipino population, in Bangladeshi population, some of the Pakistani families. So they should uh, be more careful. They should be careful at a younger age when they are aware their family had some cancers in the colorectal. Now, I'll, <coughs> there are certain non-modifiable risk factors. One of them is inflammatory bowel disease. Anybody who is a non-case of inflammatory bowel disease, like ulcerative Crohn's diseases, they are prone to get cancers. All of them are pre-oncogenic diseases. So that is one segment where the screening should start at early age. Now, uh, I'll come to the modifiable uh, risk factors, which we can modify in our regular lifestyle to avoid colorectal cancers. Like uh, we all of us, even we, we all eat processed food. So highly processed food is a very high risk factor for colorectal cancer. How to uh, modify it? We should try to eat as much as veggies, uh, fresh vegetables, and avoid processed foods. Now it's uh, very high factors uh, from the last more than 20 years. The red meat consumption, I'm not spoon consumption, excess red meat consumption has a straight association with colorectal cancers. That doesn't mean an individual should stop taking red meat, but yes, in a lesser quantity. Then smoking. Smoking has a direct correlation with the colorectal cancer. It increased the incidence of cancers to double in as compared to non-smokers. So this is one of the things which we can change our lifestyle. We can quit smoking. Uh, lack of exercise. Yes, physical exercise definitely, definitely protective from <clears throat> cancers. So we should be physically active. Alcohol. Alcohol, uh, when it comes to alcohol, it's moderate to high consumption of alcohol, which has straight association with colorectal cancers. Uh, lesser quantity of alcohol doesn't have a association. So these are some of the uh, modifiable factors we, which the changes which we, every one of us can easily bring in their life and uh, avoid the risk factors of colorectal cancer. Thank you, doctor. It was very uh, brief. Uh, when we talk about modifiable and non-modifiable risk factors, something are definitely in our control. We can stop uh, eating junk food. We can stop eating uh, processed food. We can limit the consumption of uh, other things which we should not take. They are, uh, anyways, uh, the main reason for the uh, cancers overall in the world. But when it comes to age, uh, doctor, it is uh, really not acceptable that people started uh, getting into colon cancers. Uh, now UAE has uh, seen large number of incidence cases, uh, about 45. So, uh, and it's 
honestly, uh, as a general practitioner also, it is the last thing which will come into anyone's mind. The only thing currently what general practitioners see in the uh, you know regular practice is constipation or sometimes uh, IBS. As you correctly said, the risk factors. So does constipation has to do anything like, is this a worry, is this a risk factor for getting into cancers any time in the life? Definitely. It has. Not many genetic studies. Our colon has multiple uh, millions of bacteria and different types of bacteria. Now, the recent updates in colon cancer, they're trying to find out bacteria which lead to gene mutations, which can cause uh, collateral cancer. Not just con constipation. People should be aware about altered bowel habits. Constipation, definitely. It's, it's, it will be seen in more common in left cancers. Like just Dr. Piyush told, there are left sided colon cancer and right sided colon cancer. Left-sided colon cancer are commonly present as constipation. But if you come to right side, the rectum tissue will have altered bowel habits. Usually they take it, it's like irritable bowel syndrome, sometimes diarrhea, sometimes constipation. But cancers specifically which are in the rectum, which are more mucin producing, they can present as altered bowel habits also. So whenever these symptoms are prolonging for a longer time, say a month, two months, you should definitely uh, see a medical gastroenterologist. And if he feels like there are chances, he will go ahead with the endoscopy to find out the early lesions. That's the one. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, yes, doctor. Uh, doctor Piyush, uh, we can continue the topic here. It's like, you know, that constipation and irritable bowel syndrome, I'm sure you must be seeing um, a large number of uh, patients coming to you with this kind of disease. Are they open to discuss or it, they, it's like, uh, are they uh, do uh, everything first and then they come at the later stage to us? Like, uh, what I mean to ask is that, that there are, obviously there's Dr. Google available and then there are homemade remedies. Does this constipation is really a concern for patients who are coming to you or they come early or they come on time or they come very late? So constipation is one of the commonest symptoms, you know, even if there is no cancer, many of the people, they say 20 to 30 percent, they have constipation. Now, what is important is if a person or a patient or whoever comes with constipation, first and foremost is important is the age of the patient. So age less than 40 years age more than 40 years, or I would say less than 45, more than 45. Now, coming to the UAE, you, you mentioned that, you know, as a general practitioner, you are seeing more and more colon cancers at a young age. Uh, and as Dr. Akhilesh has mentioned, it is absolutely important to understand that uh, those days where it used to happen in the sixth decade, above 60 and 70 years are over. Nowadays, the cancers are occurring early. The reasons may be a lot of, you know, westernization of the food habits, loss of lots of processed food, a lot of junk food and not everything being organic. So as per the UAE guidelines for the amenity patient, it is very important that as per the American guidelines and European guidelines, anyone who is more than 45 years of age, even if they don't have any complaints, no constipation, no diarrhea, no weight loss, even once they cross 45 years, they should do colon cancer screening. For emirati patients, as per UA guidelines, anyone more than 40 years, this is important from the American guidelines. The local guidelines tells the emiratis that more than 40 years, they should start colon cancer screening. So constipation in a young patient is common thing. But if this constipation is associated with weight loss, low hemoglobin, if there is a blood in the stool, then definitely this could be a marker of early colon cancer or it could be the marker of colon polyps. So it is absolutely necessary to be investigated with stool occult blood test. And if occult blood is positive or if patient is having weight loss, a consultation with the gastroenterologist and to plan a colonoscopy is mandatory. So, Doctor, there are uh, now in the market, uh, we see that over the counter, there are stool for occult blood uh, kits available at uh, which we can do at home. Do you recommend them as well? Uh, to be very honest, the kits are available all over the world uh, because there is a lot of awareness in the Western world among the colon cancers, like in UK, Australia and US. Patients are aware that they need to do a colon cancer screening. Unfortunately, in UAE, in Asia, subpopulation, 
there is lot of ignorance and lot of myth about colonoscopies and you know why the doctor is advising colonoscopy i am 50 years old i don't have any complaints why should i do a colonoscopy so that is a question the patient asks to you as a general practitioner and then sometimes they ask us also doctor i am okay i just have mild constipation what is the need to do a colonoscopy so this is important that you know uh, this awareness is there second thing coming to the stool test it is better to do a test known as immunohistochemical test so there are different varieties of stool occult blood test nowadays there is a recent test which has been introduced in us which on gene mutations and that is considered to be the best test but again it is very expensive not easily available everywhere including ua so it is better they do the test rather than over the counters with a with a hospital or a clinic where they know what kind of test they are doing and what they are looking for so uh, in general doctor what are the symptoms like for example a patient is fine he is 70 year old and has never been uh, had any trouble of you know uh, bloating uh, constipation or irritable bowel syndrome but suddenly he develops symptoms which may suggest of uh, uh, like which which is which is uh, helping him to understand that he needs to see a gastroenterologist or a surgeon to go for the colonoscopy what are the signs and symptoms of colon cancer so change of bowel habits like patient was having maybe constipation starts having diarrhea patient was having normal stool starts having mild constipation now what is constipation so there is lot of confusion among the people about constipation they feel that if you are not passing the stool the buras for 2 3 days then only then it is constipation no it is not like that even if you are having difficulty in passing the stool you are sitting in the washroom for more than 10 to 15 minutes you are not satisfied with your stool it indicates that there is a change in the bowel habit and this could be the first symptom of a colon cancer in a patient who is more than 45 years of age obviously weight loss blood in the stool weakness tiredness those are the obvious symptoms of colon cancer but change in the bowel habit is always the first sign of probably a colon cancer thank you doctor we have a uh, questions also in, in between coming from the audience ms sunita is asking can colitis lead to colon cancer and what are the foods that can prevent colitis uh, actually it's not the acute colitis colitis basically means inflammation infection of the colon or we call it as healthy hub the inflammation acute gastritis acute colitis because of some infection outside food will never lead to a colon cancer it is the chronic colitis which we call it as inflammatory bowel disease also known as ibd which includes ulcerative colitis and crohn's disease so these are the two ibd inflammatory bowel disease which over a period of many years can increase the risk of colon cancer and these are the patients who should be visiting their gastroenterologist regularly to do the colonoscopy for colon cancer screening thank you doctor uh, dr akhilesh i have another question from the audience uh, mr christopher is asking can hemorrhoid lead to colon cancer or people uh, also ask can colon cancer start with hemorrhoids do we have no, any no, research no, on no, this question to answer hemorrhoids as such has no correlation with the colon cancer they are not a precursor of cancer it's a altogether different pathology but yes the main thing they can present as the symptom which mimics ca colon like hemorrhoids presentation will be a painless fresh bleeding this can happen with the low lying tumors also the tumors which are within 25 cm of the inner verge when they bleed the blood is fresh so the first differential diagnosis when you see a surgeon or physician when the patient goes he says he has fresh bleeding the person will think he has hemorrhoids so obviously you will do a proctoscopy so if two pathologies are overlying the question comes if we see hemorrhoids we start treating them we can miss a cancer there are certain things which you should be aware about hemorrhoids usually very hardly they bleed to extend that will lead to anemia so whenever you are fresh bleeding with anemia think about so out of the box that they are not hemorrhoids patient required endoscopy to rule out the presence of cancer then we have to take the full history whether there are any other associated symptoms like weight loss anorexia we have to see how long lasting this so 
So yes, in short, the hemorrhoids itself don't lead to colon cancer, but the symptoms can overlap. We have to take a brief history and uh, go ahead accordingly. Uh, do you see, doctor, in your practice that most of the patients still with the, you know, even hemorrhoids, there are degrees in the hemorrhoids, they are still self-treating at home and comes to you at a very la later stage when yeah. things are really surgical only? Yeah, it's, it's, it's actually very common. It's actually very common. They take over-the-counter drugs, they order the drugs online, they take lot many non-allopathic treatments also. And when the things goes out of them, when the trouble is more, when they're bleeding more, when they come outside, when it's causing pain, when there is collapse, eventually they come to the surgeon, which a non-surgical pathologist can work to surgery. Most of the hemorrhage, 80 to 90 percent of them, can be actually treated medically with very good results. So uh, it's very important for the audience to know we are talking about colon cancer, as uh, hemorrhoids can also mimic any kind of cancer. We should not self-treat it specifically when any disease is crossing more than few weeks and it is continuously causing an issue. Please don't self-treat. Don't uh, believe in over-the-counter medication for everything and anything. Uh, it can be a cancer as well. It is a very important information to all of us. Altered bowel habits and now hemorrhoids. Uh, Please don't self-treat when it is not getting corrected within few weeks so that uh, we are in early stage. So, Dr. Akhilish, when we are talking about cancers, what are the different type of cancers we generally uh, see in the practice? Now, it, when it comes to colon cancers, uh, there is a certain classification. One is right and left, depending upon the location. Right colon cancers commonly present as a bleeding tumors patient will come with an altered stool color because it is in the right colon by the time the stool comes out. It's not act as a fresh bleeding. Most of them will be anemic because it's a chronic slow dose. They might come at times with anemia of unknown etiology. They come with very weakness, giddiness, typical symptoms of anemia, difficult breathing. They might end up with a cardiology factor because of chest pain. On workup, when they found patient is severely anemic, when we undergo an evaluation, we found a tumor lying in the right side of the colon. Now, coming to the other entity, which is left side of the colon, they are usually a picture forming tumors. They narrow down the lumen of colon, and the commonest presentation, they will come with a pain and increasing constipation trend. Like he will come, previously I was passing stool every day, then alternate day, now every day. And there are patients who get very late with acute obstruction also. And then there are rectal tumors, which are lying down lower in the rectum. They come with the symptoms of tenismus. There's a stool frequency. Every time they go to pass stools, nothing comes except mucus. That sensation of going to stool comes, but when they go and pass stools, nothing comes. It comes mucus and blood. Then there's another classification of the tumors, which are based on the histopathology of the tumor. The most common tumor we encounter in colorectal is using producing adenocarcinoma, which comprise more than 90% of the histopathological variants. There are rare variants like carcinoid, GIST, lymphoma, sarcoma, which are rarely seen. And presentation varies, depends upon what lymphoma will present in a different way, carcinoid will present in a different way. Yes, but the most common is adenocarcinoma we encounter commonly. So, and in any kind of cancers, as the location you mentioned, the first um, signs and symptoms can be just altered bowel habits and uh, probably uh, pain in abdomen, if at all it happens. Or uh, it doesn't happen. Yeah. Right side, I would say they will present anemia and bleeding per rectum. For rectum and left side, you will see the most commonest symptoms will be tenismus, bleeding per rectum. Anorexia is a constant feature of most of the cancers in the body itself. Weight loss can be there. Dr. Piyush, uh, since we were talking about uh, you know genetics, so Mr. Hussain is asking, is there any opportunity to treat colon cancer by gene editing? Uh, that's a very tricky question. Uh, what is gene editing, basically? So this is again a sort of you know a Google type of question. You know, gene editing and all those things are there. But I'll try to make it more simplified for our general population. Uh, what he means, I think, Mr. Hussain, is is there a gene therapy or a gene treatment for colon cancers? Okay. And as you know, for most of the cancers nowadays, there's a lot of research going on to get some monoclonal antibodies, which specifically targets the proteins 
those proteins those which are there in the cancer cells to kill the cancer cells so this is the ultimate goal of you know the future treatment where we give a medicine which goes into the blood it selectively finds the protein of the cancer cells kills it completely this is known as immunotherapy or a gene therapy this is the future of cancer treatment and there is a lot of research happening all over the world in western world regarding this the same way in colon cancer also the research is going on and some i want to use the word gene editing but some antibodies or monoclonal antibodies treatments are undergoing randomized controlled trials or we call it as a clinical trials to see the efficacy in the colon cancer many of this treatment has already come in lung cancers in pancreatic cancers and they are also undergoing that trials in colon cancer so i hope this will answer question of mr hussain yes doctor uh, additionally miss hina is also asking something related to genes so maybe we can answer this question as well does this cancer depends on genes pre predominantly uh, yeah i think uh, uh, miss hina is absolutely right that every cancer depends on the gene not only the colon cancer it's the gene mutation the gene which is the part of our chromosome and we are all built on chromosome and genes all of us the whole uh, the nature so any change in the gene because of food or smoking or pollution it changes our cells the cells becomes abnormal and the abnormal cells leads to the the pre cancer things and then pre cancer things leads to the cancer so yes but there are two three condition genetic condition or genetic mutations and there are some family history i just want to highlight the family history if you have a family member who or had a cancer all the family members of that person needs to do a colon cancer screening early particularly the first degree relatives which includes the son or the daughter these are the people or the brothers of the patient or sisters they need to do colon cancer screening earlier there are studies telling that if a person has developed at 45 years the other members should start the colon cancer screening probably 10 years before that so this is absolutely important that if any one of your family member had a colon cancer unfortunately the other family members needs to do colonoscopy to look for not the cancer but the pre cancer we call it as a polyps because this polyps can be removed by the doctors and we can prevent the future colon cancers in these people who are at high risk thank you doctor uh, we are getting a lot of uh, messages about very excellent and uh, content and very informative sessions uh, that's on the screen so we mr akram is also asking what is dangerous sign of stool changes i think we have elaborated it many times but maybe we can uh, say it uh, again to the audience uh, very simple uh, if you see blood in the stool blood mixed with stool so that is a dangerous sign anyone who is more than 40 years of age with blood in the stool separate or mixed it is better to visit a surgeon to get a proctoscopy that means a local examination of the lower part followed by stool test or a colonoscopy so yeah the blood in the stool is a danger sign in person more than 40 45 years thank you so doctor let's start a case scenario and let's complete the whole journey uh, a young male 45 years uh, presented with first time with abdominal pain and he just had heard that the, now there is increased incidence in uh, colorectal cancer and uh, he is not sure about the family history he has come to you uh, for the checkup how we will be proceeding uh, about this gentleman who is a 45 year old man uh, with only a concern of lower abdominal pain uh, or pain in the stomach or below areas and nothing else so how you would like to start with uh, him and he is he is concerned to know about colorectal screening so the first thing his age is there as you have mentioned is 45 years so he fits into the criteria of a colon cancer screening and obviously he is also suffering with a abdominal pain so usually we do the stool occult blood which we do is a immunohistochemical test which is the standard we also do an ultrasound abdomen because the patient is coming complaining of abdominal pain irrespective of the result of the stool occult blood we will be advising him to do a colonoscopy 
sometimes some patients are reluctant in spite of all the awareness and everything for colonoscopy and in such patient there are other options which are not the first line option it is always best to a colonoscopy colonoscopy basically means we use a camera with a tube to pass through the anal area the area where we pass the stool the buras we go under sedation that is anesthesia we call it as a takdir also in arabic the tube goes into the colon the left side the, the, the middle part and the right side we see the colon completely this is known as colonoscopy but if the patient is reluctant for colonoscopy we have some options which are not good like colonoscopy like ct colonography a ct scan there is also a new technology known as colon capsule also where we can give a capsule and the capsule will take photograph inside the colon but again this test of ct scan or colon capsule are not recommended by the societies the best thing is colonoscopy but if patient is reluctant then this other options can be discussed with the patient so obviously in your patient we will definitely advise stool test followed by a colonoscopy so once you are uh, doing the colonoscopy what results are expected from normal to abnormal uh, what what should be the report like and how that can be interpreted to the patient so when we do a colonoscopy uh, we can have a prevalence of colon polyps which i already mentioned the pre cancer lesions the prevalence is around 20 to 30% so anyone who is more than 45 years we will find polyps which are pre cancer that is they are not cancer but in future they will become cancer so we will see the polyps and usually the gastroenterologist removes them at the time of endoscopy if they are small less than 1 cm but sometimes the polyps can be large they can be multiple in that case the doctor may go for another session of colonoscopy to remove them completely they will remove the polyps this polyps will go for the pathology for the histology to see it under a camera to know is it cancer is it pre cancer is it low grade or high grade so this is right. the way the report will be interpreted thank you doctor dr akhilesh once uh, we now know the results and uh, histopathology is normal um, and sometimes it is abnormal so uh, what is uh, to say to the patient see first tell what is the next step normal histopathology yeah that has been removed and the histopathology shows there is no evidence of dysplasia or cancer that means it is completely a benign polyp so now depends upon the polyps polyp configuration uh, like if it's a less than 1 cm it's a pedunculated polyp we can screen them every three years now because we know this patient has a polyp this frequency of screening colonoscopy will be higher as compared to normal population assume this polyp was a fine polyp more than 1 cm flat polyp all these are features with more malignancy conversion but the biopsy still says it's a benign that means these patients chances of conversion to cancer are higher than simple polyps so for them the frequency of first two screenings will be 6 months followed by every one year for first two years followed by every three years so this is we have to teach them depending upon their colonoscopy findings depending upon their biopsy now it comes out to be if the biopsy comes out to be positive now positive again means it was a cancer but the margins came out to be negative that it has been completely removed then we have to see the depth of invasion there are four layers of bowel we call it t staging as per agcc staging system we have to see how much depth was involved anything uh, less than sub mucosa where we get a margin of more than 5 mm that defines the cancer has been completely removed from the local site but one more thing i want to convey to the people 5% of the colonic cancer are synchronous like there will be two sites within the colon where the cancer is arising 5% which is a very big number so we have to screen these patients for the full workup which include tumor markers cea ct scan abdomen chest they might require a pet scan also 
Now, after this imaging, if you saw, there are nodes which are positive. These are the patients which will be required a radical surgery, preferably a minimal invasive laparoscopic approach. That depends upon the location of tumor. If there is no residual tumor, then there are two spots. They can go for a tumor if there are high risk factors, which are lymphovascular invasions, neurovascular invasions. If there is no high risk factors, again, we have to screen them and we have to check them every six months. If the cancer is recurring, or there are the patients where the chances of recurrence will be higher because they already had cancer. In there. So a good pathologist is always required in a team who can report it in a proper manner. Margin, how much margin is there? What is the T stage? What is the depth of invasion? All these parameters we have to take account. What will be the best next call for the patient? Absolutely, doctor. Thank you. I think that covers the whole thing. So, in short, uh, early screening can really save life, and uh, we, we should prevent uh, by uh, early screening. Uh, doctor, uh, doctor K is asking: Crohn is Crohn disease a cancer or not? Crohn's disease is not a cancer. Crohn's disease is precancerous. Depending upon the disease groups, longer standing disease, more chances of cancer, and how much is the disease aggressive? There are people when the Crohn's is mild, the inflammation is milder. They came in a remittent phase for a common time, but they don't have a disease in between. There are patients who require steroids for a longer time. They get attacks multiple times. More the inflammation, more are the chances of cancer development. So these are again the patients who the screening frequency will be very hard on the patients. Especially the mean age of presentation of cancers in inflammatory bowel disease is 48 years. The studies. So once they are after 40, uh, we should have for look for any cancers in any part of the intestine. Especially in the Crohn's disease, it involves from mouth to anal canal anyway. Whereas ulcerative colitis is limited to the colon. As per risk is concerned, operative colitis carries a higher risk as compared to Crohn's disease for the malignant potential. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, Dr. Piyush, we have another question on screen. Uh, Mr. Jimmy is asking if a person with GERD at higher risk to develop colon cancer. Uh, hi, Mr. Jimmy. Uh, so GERD, what we call gastrointestinal reflux disease, uh, we call it as a hamuda also. Uh, our patients, a lot of them, they come with Acid reflux. Uh, uh, no, uh, bird is not a high risk uh, factor for colon cancer. So that's a good thing, at least, that this is not a factor which leads to high risk of colon cancer. So uh, since we're talking about GERD, it's a very important topic. Maybe we get because we have uh, our speakers, gastroenterologist here. So I believe everyone coming to OPD uh, is this additional uh, symptoms. So, doctor, any diet and lifestyle uh, advice uh, in general, what we should give to people who are dealing with this GERD situation? So, GERD, uh, uh, overall, if you look at 100 people, uh, normal 100 people, 25 to 35% of them do have GERD. They have acidity, heartburns. Very commonly, we see it in a regular practice. And particularly during Ramadan, because the holy month of Ramadan is going on right now, the chances of acid reflux is more because of the fasting. So overall, and particularly during the Ramadan, it is very important that we take care of our diet. Try to avoid too much spicy, too much fried food. Trying to avoid citrus fruits, which includes orange, pineapple. Try to avoid lots of coffee or tea because that causes more hamuda, more acidity. Eating your meals on time. So these are the things I would definitely advise to our patients, particularly with acid reflux. And uh, when it comes to treatment, randomly you will see uh, you know people taking over the counter. Sometimes they will take uh, uh, syrups. Then sometimes they will take tablets um, in terms of PPIs. Um, so what is the general advice to all of them who have not been to gastroenterologist and who are suffering from these you know gastric acidity blur, burping issues for quite a long time so like once in a while everyone can get an acid reflux if if they went to a good restaurant with good food okay so that is not a concern if it is like once or twice you have taken over the counter medication antacids 
but if this is a regular problem you have been suffering from it for few months now it is a good time to meet a general practitioner or a physician or a gastroenterologist to know how they can avoid it and is it something else besides the acid reflux you should be worried about so i would say so that these are the people who should visit a doctor so as i say that uh, anything which crosses more than few weeks please do visit the speciality and the specialist because uh, they are trained to uh, uh, treat you uh, for these particular things we see lot of as a general practitioner also i see lot of patients where uh, rather than you know we suggest them they come up with this thing so i need this medication i need that medication i think they 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 remember lot of names but that is not the solution the solution is to find the uh, root cause and to treat the root cause so for that definitely we need some couple of investigations to find out that and that depends for how long we need to start on the medication so uh, i have uh, mr galal i think he is uh, mentioning uh, rather than uh, asking a question him writes is mesenchymal disease uh, cellular tumor so uh, i think yeah he is writing and in addition to that he is also writing him writes maybe sign of advanced colon cancer thank you mr galal uh, for that uh, i think our audience is very interactive and they would like to add to our topics that's very uh, nice to see uh, we have uh, mr christopher again he is replying to mr galal uh, can you tell me more about what stage does it lead to so i think the audience is uh, questioning each other also uh, in the uh, comment box which is very good so i'll proceed uh, for, for, with for more questions uh, mr rajiv uh, she uh, miss rajiv she is asking uh, what is reactive lymphoid uh, hyperplasia is it a cancer so i'll take one or two of them i think uh, coming to this uh, the last one by miss uh, ranjini i think reactive lymphoid hyperplasia it is fortunately not a cancer and this can be seen very easily because of infection or inflammation anywhere in the body your lymph nodes can become big so that is there and uh, regarding the uh, another question by mr christopher regarding the advanced cancer as dr akhilesh has told hemorrhoids can be a first sign of colon cancer and anyone who is more than 40 years of age bleeding per rectum hemorrhoids it is better to visit a gi surgeon or a surgeon with a gastroenterologist to decide for a colonoscopy because hemorrhoids can be the first symptom of a advanced can cancer rather than a early cancer so it's it's important that uh, not everyone will require it but it should be seen by an expert or a specialist regarding the the colon cancer awareness thank you thank you doctor dr akhilesh a very important question um, i have from uh, mr sayed ahmed i think he is asking pet scan is negative and not spread after hemicolectomy i have questions whether i have to go for chemotherapy i'm sure he is asking about himself so there is a writing error but i hope we can answer his question see uh, any tumor in colon which is beyond stage 2 will require chemotherapy as per international guidelines american agcc guidelines now any tumor with stage 2 with high risk factors like perforation obstruction they are the exceptions which will require chemotherapy so this information is uh, uh, not good enough to say whether the chemo is required or not we need to see the biopsy report any involvement of lymph nodes if mr sayer amar any of the lymph nodes are positive then you are a candidate of chemotherapy any tumor which is uh, or a or t for b which has gone outside the colon wall and involved the adjacent organ that is e stage they are the one who will require the chemo yes any tumor which is limited to t3 and n0 or below that they want required the chemotherapy so we need a descriptive biopsy report uh, which you can share us on the emails or the channels and then we can get back to you whether you are a candidate for chemotherapy Absolutely, Mr. Syed. Um, uh, you can always write back to us. You can always consult Dr. Akhilesh and Dr. Piyush. Uh, we both are available at Prime Hospital, Garod, and uh, we are more than happy to help you in this uh, questions or query. Shall you have any more? Uh, uh, so, Miss um, Mia is fine. Thank you, Dr. Piyush, for explaining about GERD. Very helpful advice. Thank you, Mia, for uh, your question. So, in general, um, I think we have covered most of the things. Uh, but uh, still um, some queries related to you know uh, multivitamins uh, 
Dr. Aghilesh, do you see any helpful, uh, you know, pe should people take multivitamins overall to prevent cancer or specifically to uh, colon cancer? What does the research say? Uh, the uh, recent uh, uh, the trials has concluded vitamin D has a prophylactic role. That is one. Another vitamin C things are going on. One more drug, which is aspirin, there are studies that five to ten years use of aspirin prevents colorectal cancer. It has been proven. But we need to see a cardiologist before starting it. Low dose aspirin definitely has a protective role. Other things which add on is plant based diet. You have to keep your BMI between 18 to 25. Obesity is one of the factors which prevents colorectal cancers. So, yes, vitamin D, uh, it in fact has been. Uh, recently approved there's a trial called as a solar trial in fact they are adding vitamin d into the post-operative cases of colorectal cancers along with the chemotherapy high dose vitamin d3 this trial probably the outcomes will come by the end of the years but protective role vitamin d has not other vitamins not proven thank you doctor dr piyush um, what do you as a you know uh, as a practice what are the what are some misconceptions still about uh, colon cancer screening uh, how to how to take care of this further the first uh, misconception is that you know it is not required like when a, when a general practitioner or a, or a surgeon or a physician or a gastroenterologist tell a person who is more than 45 years or whatever the age above 45 please do a colonoscopy uh, they feel that you know why the doctor is doing the colonoscopy what he is going to get from me maybe maybe is it some other reason he's doing a colonoscopy i hope you understand my point so and they are there's a lot of reluctance a lot of shyness among the females also for the colonoscopy even for the males also that when we do a colonoscopy you know this and that a lot of lot of misconceptions are there and what we need to tell our patient is that we do the colonoscopy, not only me, the other doctors also. We do it very safely. It is a very safe procedure. It is a simple procedure with minimal complications. We discharge the patient usually three hours after our procedures. Patient are awake immediately after the procedure in 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, and most of the patients are discharged on the same day. They are able to work the next day. But if you leave behind a polyp, which again becomes a cancer in the future, advanced cancer, we would always think why he or she did not perform a screening colonoscopy and maybe I would not have been in this stage. So the social stigma att attached with endoscopy is something we should create awareness among, among our people in companies, workplace. If you, if you go to Western countries, each one will be asking other after 45, did you did your colon cancer screening or not? If he has not done, the other person will tell, why didn't you do it? You should do it. So this is what we want among the general population to motivate each other that it is a safe procedure and we should do it for the safety of ourselves, our family, for our longevity and to make the world, I won't say it will become free of cancer, but at least we can save many of lives which could have been saved with, with colonoscopy early. Thank you, Doctor. Doctor Aklish, um, I, I want to really ask this question. So stage one and stage four, does this really make a difference uh, in the treatment? It makes a huge difference. At least. That is one thing about colorectal cancer I want to convey to the normal population. It is one of the cancers treated in early stage of very good longevity is expected. I have my patients who are following me from 2008 when I started doing laparoscopic colorectal surgeries. They are still alive, tumor free lives. But reason being, uh, they were being diagnosed at stage one or two. I won't say the same with three or four. Four, anyway, is a metastatic cancer which has involved other organs. So the treatments only targets on the palliations of the symptoms. No of the treatment can cure a stage four cancer. Some promising immunotherapies are coming which can increase the lifespan. So, uh, the take-home message is uh, get screened yourself, avoid your symptoms. Reason being, if we pick up tumor at stage 1 or 2, and if properly radical surgery is done, they can live a normal life. Uh, for four, five years, they will be on a screening protocols, which are standard protocols. 
but yes, early stage, early stage. cure, a better recovery, better life. Thank you, doctor, for that uh, answer. Uh, I think we can uh, end our session with this question from Dr. Sayed Ahmed. Uh, PET scan uh, to be done every six months as a precaution? Not required. So same question. Yeah. Uh, we can increase the frequency when there is something suspicious or borderline. If your PET scan is normal, it should not be done so frequently. Medical oncologist is the best person to answer you regarding when and how PET scans are required. Normal screening requires CT, colonoscopy, CE, and maybe ultrasound abdomen. PET scan should be done after involving a medical oncologist when he feels PET is required. PET scan come into the scene when we have something suspicion with the CT or colon, or we are planning any line of treatment when we are bringing, like some patient had a colorectal cancer five years back. In the fifth year of screening, something has found like his tumor markers right on the rising trend. Colonoscopy picked up some lesion. CT picked up some lesion. Yes, now we have to plan a second treatment for the patient. For prior to that, we need a PET to see whether there is any extra systemic disease beyond the colon, something in the brain, something in the lungs before planning the line of treatment. It is uh, uh, not a regular screening protocol, but I think uh, medical oncologist is the best. It is case to case. Depends uh, what was your stage of disease, what was seen in your previous PET scan. Uh, six months uh, look like a very frequent, should not be done so frequent. Cannot listen to... Uh, Ms. Swarna is asking, do we have to do colonoscopy in a general medical checkup? I think, uh, Swarna, as we say that there are high-risk groups, and if you have any symptoms which may suggest of colon cancer, as our specialist already say, please do visit. And most importantly, we may not have treatment for every disease, but we have, a, we have something called preventive health checkups. Uh, that is not always age bound. If you find some signs and symptoms, you need always to speak to a specialist because they are specialists in that particular field. The, their extensive knowledge and uh, uh, you know treatment modalities will surely help. At least they'll give the right uh, insights about the things. The most important thing is to know. Most important thing is to know the correct information. Um, and uh, now we are proceeding towards the end of the session. I will request Dr. Piyush uh, uh, to say anything uh, for our audience uh, as a take-home message. So, so it's a call on Cancer Awareness Month. You know, this is there, and uh, the take-home message is very simple: that uh, colon cancer is there. Uh, the prevalence is increasing. It is occurring in younger population, and we need to do screening for it. Colonoscopy is a safe procedure with minimal complication and we need to aware, we need to make each other aware, need to motivate each other that we should do the colon cancer screening with the stool test, with the colonoscopy and it is completely safe and we can prevent a deadly disease later on if we go with the preventive health as you have mentioned. Thank you, Doctor. Dr. Akhilesh, take home message. Again, screen yourself, symptoms. don't diagnose yourself, don't take over the counter medications. Unfortunately, even if you picked up with the colon cancers, nowadays minimal invasive surgeries are there, robotic surgeries is coming up with excellent results, with radical surgeries, with very, very good survival. So uh, any any bleeding PR, any altered bowel habits, any weight loss, you know, any, any anorexia, don't ignore at all. Just come to the specialist and consultant, and uh, we are there to help you anytime. Uh, thank you all for attending today's webinar on colon cancer awareness. We hope that this discussion has provided you with valuable insights. We want to thank our panel of experts for sharing their knowledge, Dr. Piyush, Dr. Akhilesh, and experiences with us today. Before we wrap up, we want to remind you of the importance of colon cancer screening and early detection. If you or someone you know is at high risk of developing colon cancer, we urge you to speak with your healthcare provider, your doctors, your primary care physicians about scheduling a screening. 
Finally, thank you audience for your engagement and participation in today's webinar. Your questions and comments have added in depth and richness to our discussion. We hope uh, you will continue learning, sharing and advocating for colon cancer in general awareness in your communities. Thank you again for joining us. Uh, we will be coming up with next webinar on Ramadan and fasting soon next week. And we wish you all the best in your journey towards health and wellness. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. Yeah.